That's good. Okay. So I ran I ran pilot step ten dot cfg and it produced a lot of output. But let's just look at the stuff that we care about. It says solving the equations. It's a linear problem. We use a nonlinear uh, solver for everything because it's it's not any less efficient. <clears throat> if it's a linear problem, you only do one step and you don't have to do extra checks. So it says we started our nonlinear problem. Then we solved a linear problem. It took 27 iterations. Uh, it converged due to a relative tolerance on the residual. Um, and then you, there, you know, this is just a line search for the nonlinear. We can shut that off, I guess. And so we have a very small residual norm at the end. And the nonlinear uh, solve converged. And then at the end, we get all our output put about uh, our performance. OK. Uh, so now I want to try solving with LU. So if we look at the slides, uh, let's see. OK. So uh, LU on the whole problem, how do we do it? Well, we'll just change the PC type to LU. So I have, oops, uh, I have a, a CFG file that does just that. Um, Pilot CFG files are very composable. It's nice, so you can just kind of throw down as many of them on the command line as you want, like this. It's beautiful. So it integrates the Jacobi and the residual. OK, something went wrong. This is a very, very useful skill to have in Pilot is when something goes wrong, it outputs an error tr uh, traceback like this. So it says something went wrong in problems dot solve or nonlinear dot solve. OK, so something went wrong in the nonlinear solve. And, the, and here's the stack. First, it, the application calls the app, calls time dependent dot step. And then it's implicit problem, so it called the solver. And then this problems dot py is a wrapper uh, for the C++. So we can't see down in the C++ stack. But the C++ stack is reproduced here from Petsy. So we have solve, and then it's Newton, and the linear solve is inside of Newton. The linear uh, solve gets set up. The preconditioner is set up. The preconditioner is LU, so you have an LU set up. There's a numeric factorization. Numeric factorization for a sequential AIJ matrix, and then the pivot check fails. And up here at the top, there's a zero pivot. Um, what does that mean? Well, in row zero, there is a value 0 on the diagonal. And we knew this would happen because we have a saddle point problem. There will be some zeros on the diagonal. It happens to be in the first row here. So that is the problem. Um, so what do we do? So it failed due to the saddle point problem. Uh, well, we can use. Um, the field split preconditioner. And in, in Pilot, you can uh, just do it by hand, where you say PC, type, field split. But there's, there's several things to set up. So in, in Pilot, we have a shortcut that says split up the fields is true. And um, we want to change the matrix type to AIJ because it destroys the block nature of our matrix. I don't think this is necessary anymore, but we'll just do it. And here we'll say, um, let's use BC type field split. Uh, and let's combine them using block Jacobi or additive. And we'll do LU for the uh, elastic block and nothing for the, uh, or close to nothing for the, uh, the traction block. And we'll let it take a thousand iterates if it needs to. So let's do it. Oh, and I'll just show you this just so you see that it's exactly what was on my screen.
Well, shouldn't be LU. Happening, Brad. Oh, the ILU. Oh, okay. The the ordering. Okay, I'll show you how to fix this. So uh, we the ordering of the equations can be different uh, depending on what happens. And here, the default uh, preconditioner is ILU unless you tell it something something else. And so we have an ILU, an incomplete LU that's failing here. So let me just, OK. So do we change the name from Lagrange multipliers to something else? Let's see. Numbers no longer work. Yeah, but is it Lagrange? Multipliers or multiplier? Is the name wrong? Because that's what it looks like. Because it's not getting set. It's yeah. Multiplier. Yep, so there was an S that was wrong. Uh, so once you fix that, it takes 58 iterations. I don't know how I... No, it didn't come up before. That's very strange. OK, but let's scroll up. So we can solve this. It took 58 iterations, which for such a small problem is a little weak. Um, and so what you don't really want to uh, do this, I think, when you're just starting out, because these issues of the tolerances, like if you don't make the tolerance low enough, it can mess with your physics. So what I would recommend is when you start out, you do the exact uh, solver. So how is this different? Instead of doing an additive composition, we want to do a sure complement and a full factorization. And then we solve this uh, elastic problem exactly, and we solve the uh, uh, Lagrange multiplier problem exactly. So let's see. So that should be 3. Yeah, I just had an S in that one file, and I didn't notice it. That's that's why I was getting unpredictable results. Uh, you, gotta, you, sh you have to pay attention to this line when you run option left. So if it hadn't failed, if it had gotten through the run, this options left would have said, um, Minus PC field split Lagrange multipliers PC type uh, Jacobi uh, was not used. And that would have told me I misspelled the option. So we have to, we have to be careful and check that. I, I wasn't careful last time. But here we've spelled it right. So let's try using an exact solver for this thing. OK, so what happened? Um, what happened is we used an exact solver, and it solved in one iterate, which is great. And so this is what you should do for fault problems that you are just setting up. Use this solver, and then you should get all your answers in one iterate. OK, I got to fix this slide. Because this still has zeros and ones, I fixed every. I fixed the other ones. Shoot, uh, I got to remember that. So uh, th that's great, but um, when we did this, you see that we used a very accurate solver for the Lagrange multipliers here, very low tolerance. So we didn't. Um, 
So what happens is it, it ends up taking quite a few iterates there. So let's see how to see that. So not only can you provide CFG files on the command line, you can do things like this. So I want to see how many iterates this inner solver that just operates on the Lagrange multipliers is taking. Okay, so check it out. It only took one outer iterate, but it took me quite a few iterates to solve that sure complement. Or you know, the it's you. They say sure complement, but the tractions problem to solve it accurately took me quite a few iterates. Okay, thirty iterates there each time. And so uh, maybe I want to do a little bit better than that. Um, so what could we do? Well, um, Brad and Charles and I came up with uh, a better preconditioner for the traction variables. Um, the default preconditioners for the Stokes problem don't work all that well for the sure complement in the elastic tractions problem. So we have something, and you can turn it on uh, by saying use custom constraint PC. Um, and uh, then tell Petsy that you're using your own preconditioner for the sure complement. So don't use the default ones. And so let's see. So there we can do this. And so we want to add that in. Okay, you may not be wowed uh, by this, but I was. So it went from 30 iterates to 24, and from 30 to 25. But once you get um, to a large problem uh, and in parallel, this, uh, this difference can become hundreds of iterations, and it really matters. And if you look at our paper in JGR, we have the exact numbers. So uh, I'm showing here on the slide that it went from 30 iterates. Oh, so another way to see this, aha, so we can do this. So I was doing the monitor so you can see the whole thing. But you can do something like this. Instead of monitor, you can say KSP converged reason. And then it will uh, show you just the total number of iterates it took. So it took 24 iterates here and 25. So you can get a more compressed representation. That's probably better. And that's what I do on the slide here. So you can see that when you use it, uh, you decrease the number of iterates. It gets much better for larger problems. So uh, now that we know we can do that, we can also say, well, what is the effect of, you know, if you look at up here where I solved the inner system, the, the sure complement system exactly. So I, I solve it all the way down to the 10 to the 12th. And you're thinking to yourself, I can't measure something down to 10 to the 12th. What if I just solved it to 10 to the minus 5 or something like that? Well, let's try that. And so what would that look like? Well, let's look at here, I change this 10 to the minus 11 to a 10 to the minus 5. And I also look at the converged reason. So now I can just say, um, I wish there were a faster way to do this. I guess I could have just cut and pasted, huh? What? Uh-oh, what was it telling me? Without split fields. Oh, okay. I forgot to put the split fields flag here to true, but it'll do it for you anyway, so it's being kind of smart. 
Okay, so let's look at what happened. Ah, now what happened is I, um, oh, and you can see that we're not getting our monitors, so something must be misspelled. Yes, look, aha, I made another mistake. Dang it, it's mistake day. Okay, um, okay, now that I just want to make sure that split fields, that unsquared fields, okay. So, let's look at it again. Ah, better. So, now we can see that it doesn't take us uh, 24 and 25 iterates anymore. It takes us 10 and 10 and 15. But we do an extra outer iterate. We don't solve it in one iterate anymore. We solve it in two. But it, overall, it seems to be a win, because here we have 35 iterates instead of 49 that we had before. Right? So these are the kind of games you can play. You can say, well, I'll have a less accurate, sure, you know, Lagrange multiplier solve. Um, what if we don't use LU for the... Um, Displacement solve. What if we use out al just algebraic multi grid? Well, let's see. Ah. And that is also wrong. How did this ever work? We must have changed the name at, at some time because it worked before. So this does, and then. Okay, so now you can see that we're changing the KSP from LU just to algebraic multigrid. But that's just one pass of algebraic multigrid. So let's look at what happens. Okay, now what we see is with that, uh, it took uh, quite a, a few more iterates. Now we're all the way up to seven linear iterates. Uh, and each uh, inner solve, each solve for the sure complements, it's taking, that's pretty good. It's taking 15 or 16 iterations. That's not bad at all, right? But we've taken seven iterations here. Okay. And does that agree? That, oh, it took, hmm. Okay, well, some things, some things are slightly different than my slide. Why is it slightly different than my slide? Should have taken nine. Hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. That is not right. Yeah, it's taking more than one. Ah. So there's, that's a problem. Something's wrong. I saw this before, Brad. Uh-oh. Okay, so uh, 
Give res. Oh. Let's change this back to 11. Displacement pre only GMG. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, ha, so if we make, if we make the, um, if we make this the ground solve accurate again, uh, then uh, when we solve the problem, uh, get a low residual, then the whole linear system is solved. It's here. Uh, you can see we're taking the, this large number of iterates. So here, I did not, in, I had not incorporated the ten to the minus five. Um, but we can, we can restore this behavior where it uh, goes down to a few iterates again. Uh, by including. A, uh, a Krelov solver in addition to the algebraic multigrid. Okay? And so we'll just have to uh, you know, and fix these. Okay. I think it can use lowercase true. So you can see that we've we've added these lines here. Okay. And we're back down to two iterates. Uh, we're back down to two iterates and, and one nonlinear solve. So now let's let's go back and, and back off the um, and back off the the Lagrange multiplier solve again, like we were. And we saw it went wrong there. Isn't that? Oh, it's this. So let's make it inaccurate. But the global uh, solver, remember I told you that um, GM res can get confused if you have an inaccurate preconditioner, um, an inaccurate iterative preconditioner. I believe that's what happened. So, whoops. I think we have to switch to FGMRES on the outer solve, and then we can have inaccurate inner solves. Yes. Okay, that was the problem on number six. So let me fix number six too. And so I will tar up these fixed systems. And now they will completely match the slides, just to make sure. Yes. Okay, good. 
Well, I got a, the output is slightly different, but uh, that's okay. I, I will I will update the output. So um, there we saw stepwise backing off of complete uh, exact solvers to give you more and more inexact solvers that would be that would have better and better performance. Okay, so let's see. Where are my, here's my Adobe Connect. I do I? You see the little bar down in the lower right? Your Adobe Connect toolbar? Yeah, I see the, the toolbar. I'm on, I'm on my chat right now. Back oh, there's the share. Oh, stop sharing. There we go. Okay, and then I'll say share document and go to the Okay. 